What's up, kin folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Thank you for watching on the Fox Sports app, YouTube, or listening wherever you get your podcast. Tonight, we are reacting live to Georgia's 65 to 7 win against number three Texas Christian in the most lopsided national championship game of my entire life. And I've been on this earth for 36 years come this July. But what we witnessed was dominance as we define it in the Oxford English Dictionary. Georgia, far and away, the national champion. And by some margin here, because my goodness, the number one Georgia Bulldogs were up 38 points or 38 to, one, to 38 to seven. So they're up 31 points, scored 38 in the first half. My goodness. We're talking about we're talking about just the third team in the modern era to go 15 and 0 in college football history, right? Joining 2019 LSU, 2018 Clemson. But we're also talking about a team that was up 52 to 7 after three and had not one, but two curtain calls for seniors and or players that are going to go into the NFL draft, starting with the nine-minute mark of the fourth quarter. A couple of ways that I want to frame this, but the first one is a note from producer Tyler. The over-under on this game was 63 points. I'm going to say it again. The over-under on this game was 63. Georgia scored 65. I mean, by the time the first half ended, we all felt the national championship game was over. And at that time, garbage time had begun. Even Kirby Smart, to his credit, tried to say, hey, we've not been a great third quarter team, and they have been a very good third quarter team, to which none of us were actually in a position to take him seriously. But the other part to frame this with is this Georgia football team is not even as talented as the 2021 team, though it is more accomplished. That's ridiculous. That is remarkable. Five first rounders on that defense last year. That was all world. And the next year they reload and they run the table. And at times they did not look like the best team in college football. Meanwhile, we won. Looks a lot like the last week, the last game of the college football season. Remember Georgia knocked off Oregon 49 to three. At what point? We're going, okay, so Georgia occupies the first four slots in everybody's top 25, and we don't know what to do with Oregon. Oregon bounces back, wins 10, right, in a really fantastic Holiday Bowl win against North Carolina, ends up being a really great football team in Dan Lanning's first time ever being a head coach. And by halftime, Oregon Duck fans are looking at everybody else going, we told y'all, they are different. now." couple other ways to put this, but I pick up my goddaughters from school on Mondays. Today is a Monday, okay? They know the national championship game is going on. They know this is what I do. So I usually get a call or I call them to kiss them goodnight on nights like this. And they ask me, uh, RJ, what's the score? I said, it's 52 to 7. And they're like, what was the halftime score? I said, it was 38 to 7. And they said, does that mean that Georgia has to play a man down in the second half to make it fair? In the national championship game, guys. All right. Like, that's the level of dominance. We have elementary school girls asking for Texas Christian to get a handicap because they know the national championship game is not supposed to be this lopsided. At one point, you know, it, they're going up 45 to 7. And it felt like Jordan Peele had taken over directing this game. It was a horror show. It was the kind you could not look away from because you could not believe that this was happening in the way that it was happening. You might be of, you know, 99% of people's opinion, which is to say that Texas Christian was going to get boat raced. But it's another thing to say that and then for Georgia to be able to follow through on doing just that. And this is, again, the largest margin of victory, the single Best beatdown that I have ever seen in a national championship game. And I dare say anybody has seen in a national championship game. As a matter of fact, the last time that we saw a program up by 34 or more at halftime was when Miami beat down Nebraska in 2002. It's 21 years ago, guys. Right? 
And I am an Oklahoma fan, for which many of you know. That also means that I lived through USC and Matt Leinert and him beating the hell out of Oklahoma 55 to 19, so bad at halftime that they bring Ashley Simpson on to sing and she gets booed because Oklahoma fans had had enough, right? So I, I know what this is like. Notre Dame fans, when they had to play Alabama 2012, same Notre Dame team that came down to Oklahoma, beat up on Oklahoma with Manti Teo and James Harden got traded on the same night. Yeah, I was in the press box that night and I don't forget it, but that team we thought was going to be good. No, Alabama ended up handing them their head, which is how we get back to Georgia. Because we had thought for some time that Alabama and what Nick Saban has done basically over the last 15 years can never be repeated. That level of dominance in the sport. And for me, He's still the greatest college football coach of all time. But a guy he had on his staff until 2016 is head coach at Georgia. And he has taken that model and that style, the ability to recruit more five stars than you and play outstanding football when it matters most to Georgia. And now it feels with this team being the first to win back-to-back -back national championships in the college football playoff era, that it's not just they are the king of the sport. It's the mantle of dynastic is now theirs. They've won two in a row now, folks. And about four years ago, we started to look at Georgia and believe that this could happen. It's going to take some leap of faith there, but you saw them recruiting. You saw them winning national recruiting titles, for which most people want to say, okay, when, in recruit, when has recruiting ever won a national championship? I'm going, you don't understand when you start loading up in the way that Georgia has been loading up since 2016, it's not a matter of if, but when. And you could see that with the development of the guys on that team. And frankly, the guys that just wanted to be on that team. All right. So I, the guys developed on that team, take for instance, uh, Brock Bowers, who was a freshman last year. And this year, right, wins his second straight national championship. He's two for two. Seven catches, 152 yards with the TD. Good luck, SEC, because you got another year of that dude because he's just a sophomore. That is a dude that wanted to be was developed, right? Another guy, but that wanted to be a Georgia Bulldog, got his only real big-time offer from Georgia, Lad McConkey. Had an outstanding year. Five catches, 88 yards in this one with two TDs. Another guy, developed, Devon Bullard, who basically is defensive MVP in this game with only having played the first half, two interceptions, Left the game in the third quarter with an injury. And then the dude that absolutely, beyond anything else, wanted to be a Georgia Bulldog in the worst way, the quarterback, Stetson Bennett, has a night of nights, 18 of uh, for, uh, 25, 304 pass yards, four tutties, no picks, 39 rush yards, two TDs. I'm still getting a kick out of people that are trying to remind us or act as if they are giving us some sort of nugget or gift when they say that Stetson Bennett is fast. Because the number of people that think that Stetson Bennett is slow, you can count on one hand, and they do not watch Georgia play football, all right? Nobody, but nobody, thought that dude was slow. Now, it is one thing for him to be fast. It is another thing for the defense to be key keying on Kendall Milton, Kenny McIntosh, Jason Edwards. And then, in garbage time, for you to be able to pull out Branson Robinson, who is a Zeus White clone. And if you've been following recruiting or even high school football in Mississippi, you understand they're that loaded. They go deep enough that you can bring Branson Robinson in in garbage time to go get you some dubs here. But like the other part that I love about this is Stetson Bennett marked his place in history a year ago, right? When you led the Georgia Bulldogs to their first national championship in four decades, you remember forever. And rather than go to the NFL, he said, no, I love this. I want to do this again. And who could blame him? So he comes back. Starting quarterback, he's surrounded by outstanding players everywhere you look, and he coaxes that team, manages that team, and then playmakes that team into a second national championship in as many years, to which there is no more discussion about whether or not Stetson Bennett is the best quarterback that Georgia has ever had, which is a wild thought for a guy that walked on, got run off to JUCO, had an offer from the Louisiana Raging Cajuns he was going to take until Kirby Smart called him up on signing day and said, do you want to come back? Okay. Then there's the discussion about where does he rank in the pantheon of greats and as far as Georgia football is concerned. Herschel Walker's still up there at number one, no matter what anybody wants to tell you. 
I don't care how far ago it was. I don't care what football looked like. If you know about Urshel Walker and that 81 season in particular, that 80 season too, you understand. After that, you can make an argument that talented players, more talented players have played at Georgia. George Pickens comes to mind, right? Champ Bailey comes to mind. If we even want to take it in as far as like acting, we can go with Omar Hardwick, right? Omar, he would, yeah, it, it, power, look it up and go there. But Stetson Bennett is now, I think, top five, man. And that's up there with DJ Shockley, Matt Stafford, Herschel Walker. And then we can we can play mix and match there, right? It's like that. You could talk about what a Sony Michelle has meant. You could talk about what a Todd Gurley has meant. But none of those dudes won national championships. And that's the separator. A couple years ago, I'm doing my top 10 greatest all-time college football players. One of the things I asked was, did you win national titles? Okay. You had to go between Herschel Walker and Stetson Bennett before you got a national title winning player with a Georgia G on his helmet. That is wild. Stetson Bennett did that for the Georgia Bulldogs, all right? I also want to add in here, this is a man who's taken full advantage of the college experience and full advantage of what college football has become in recent years, okay? So 2019, I kind of want to put into a capsule because everything since 2019 has changed drastically all over the world, but in this sport that we know and love, right? The transfer portal gets on and popping just a couple of years before. You also get the red shirt rule in which guys can play four games and still keep their eligibility. And then you got the COVID eligibility year, which is to say that Stetson Bennett won a national championship as a 25-year-old quarterback. That is two years older than Trevor Lawrence and the same age as Lamar Jackson, but goodness me, man, if it's there for you, go do it. Be the big man on campus and go have a great time playing the best football you might play in all your life, right? And that's not even to say that his NFL career couldn't look, eclipse this, but it's going to be difficult to eclipse winning two national championships in two years at a school that loved its college football and had been starved of its college football national championship for four decades. Hats off to Stetson Bennett. If, you know, this is the end, could he go out on a higher note? I don't think so, man. I sincerely don't. So thank you for watching the number one college football show. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and like this video so that you don't miss any of the best college football coverage in America.